Artist Wendy Savage has an extensive exhibition background, and her works of art have been displayed in the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and as far away as the city of Petrozavodsk in the former Soviet Union. She draws upon her Ojibwe heritage to create canvases of natural and sometimes personal beauty. Home to two art galleries, the Gamaji Building in downtown Duluth is the spot for the region's Native American artists to exhibit their works of art. Today, we'll interview Wendy Savage and view some of her paintings. My art evolves with what I want to do at different times. I don't stick with one media, although I keep going back to traditional Ojibwe beadwork. And lately now, I'm paintings, and then also working on a cradleboard. I think Native American art is taking a resurgence and with what we have going here at uh, Jamaji here, uh, we've taken over this room and turned it into an art studio. We've had uh, many, many exhibitions with Trepanner Hall and for years I was a curator for the Ojibwe Art Expo and then I was also a curator for a few other shows and it's become the hot spot in Duluth. We had a young group of students that were in here from Cromwell, and it was the first gallery experience they had. And they were interviewing me for their uh, yearbook. And the one young man said, what was your favorite piece of art? And I said, you know what? I just found it. It was, hit in the it was hidden in a closet for the last 10 years. And it's the first oil pastel I did of a ribbon applique design. So then I found these fabulous oil pastels uh, from, from Switzerland, I think. That, and started playing with those because my, I like to be very tactile with my hands. So I started rubbing and moving that. And it's the most exciting piece that I've done. And I'll never sell it and I'll never give it away. And it's, it's kept me going for the last 30 years. And now I'm going back again doing those patterns. Wendy, tell us about this piece, Gold Bud. This was the first piece that I did in this series. And it was based on a moccasin beadwork pattern that I did for uh, two family members that were coming up for a wedding and I fell in love so much with the design that I did that I decided to recreate it on, uh, on this birch board which led to the, this whole series. This is a new media for me. These are birch boards and uh, this is just basic acrylic paint but uh, I also like dots because I like the beadwork and the way that I kind of get uh, the interpretation of dots is with this very uh, special paint pen that you go in and you dot one single thing at a time. And I, and I like the hearts because it's just something that I always bead, but it has this cur uh, double curve motif. And when you study uh, the double curve motif, it goes way back to the Hopewell culture and you can find a lot of that done in the Hopewell culture. And the colors that I've selected, these are old beadwork patterns that um, come from the early uh, 1900s to the early late 1800s. But there were different beads at the time that had different colors, and you can't get those colors today. So they're a little more muted, they're a little more rich, they look more like jewels, and I have some of them. And so that's what I've based these color designs on is, is the old time bead, beads that you used to be able to get and they're not being done anymore. On the outside, since it's this great birch board, I have this old time design that's, that's a triangle and usually it's based off of the otter pattern and it's like three triangles and then a longer triangle and it's based on the way that the otter walks when he's in the snow as he does three jumps and then he slides. And I also find that really wonderful because if you're gonna have this nice birch board, why wouldn't you use all the surfaces? It gives it another dimension and people can come up and say, oh, that's great. But then if they're really looking, they can go, look, she's got something on the sides and she's got something on the top, and something on the bottom. I always like to do a little bit of intrigue and make artists you know, and the general public just look a little closer. Wendy comes from a family of artists, and one can see how important family is in her mixed media piece titled Four Generations. She and her siblings have exhibited their works nationally and internationally. 
when you come from a family of six of us that have all done artwork, it's rather an exciting lifestyle. And we travel all over, we go to museums, uh, we talk a lot to each other's art, and we all travel in a pack. We have, it's like our own tribe. Wherever someone's working, if they're working on site, we're all going to go there. So it's, it's rather exciting, and we feed off of each other, and there's a lot of encouragement. I just think it's something that we do because it's part of our community and, and part of what we want to do. I'm very comfortable with being a Native American artist. I think that's what makes us unique. If you want to look at the, at the state of what a culture is in, or, or the state, you know, look at their arts. Art has always been around. That's the one thing we do as humans. We are the only people that, we are the only creature that creates art. When you look into, and you do a lot of study in museums and go to the history, and you start looking at Native American art, how could you not want to do that? It's just so gorgeous and just so beautiful. It just speaks to your soul. This Native Report Artist Profile is funded by the citizens of Minnesota through the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.